pleasure and an honor. Um, so I'll be talking about a, um, um, assessing healthcare needs in an inaccessible conflict zone remote surveying in southern Syria. So basically, we performed a health survey in the rebel health areas in southern Syria, um, remotely from Jordan. So briefly, first the background. Um, seven years of war has uh, heavily affected the, the society here in southern Syria. They were the first to be involved in the resistance against the government. So these years were uh, characterized by um, heavy fighting, intense um, conflicts, um, yeah, like ISIS, there was different tribes and families involved. Um, so it was a pretty mess, a uh, yeah, bit of a mess still, as you might have read in the news. So, um, uh, well, basically during these times, like, access to these areas is uh, heavily compromised. So it was extremely difficult to get um, access to the affected populations in terms of food, um, livelihoods, and of course medical aid. So we've been trying during the war times um, as MSF to, to, to assist with medical aid, um, mostly war wounded. But since there is a de-escalation period, well, which is now over, but started somewhere in late 2017, this allowed us to look into um, well, doing a epidemiological study on um, the most important health um, care gaps and access to um, to access, uh, 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 barriers to accessing uh, health care. So in this period, um, we were like, okay, we cannot really access this area, but still it would be of tremendous value to uh, get this information to see where are the health gaps. Um, so I'm talking here about um, the a model, and the experience of a remote survey rather than like the survey outcomes and the objectives uh, and so forth. Um, yeah, so briefly, the objective of the actual survey was to, to, to look into the health gaps and to the barriers of accessing healthcare, looking at things like prevalence of or wounded, um, NCDs, maternal care, child care vaccination, and so forth and so on. So MSF, of course, has a lot of um, experience with uh, well, remote work, so monitoring, support, but like actual epidemiological studies is, is relatively new. So um, here you can see the remote context, basically. Um, the yellow parts are the rebel health areas. And, um, yeah, unaccessible. We picked the two southern governorates um, of Kinetra and the western part of Dara, there in the, in the red circle, to, to conduct this study. Um, so using our third party, I'll come back to that later, and um, our connections to local councils and population data from UNHR, UNHCR, we, were, we managed to, to um, inform ourselves on the population density and where are inhabited areas, where at that moment in time are the people. And um, we were able to inform ourselves to develop a two-stage cluster design. So briefly, here you can see where um, we performed the survey, um, the clusters and inhabited areas on basis of all the population data we got. And here are, so there's a qualitative aspect to this, um, to the study as well, I'll come back to that later. These are the um, medical facilities that we interviewed um, for triangulation of, um, of information. So uh, very quickly, you know, war violence follows a erratic pattern, so there's been a lot, lot of like, skirmishes and shelling throughout, also last year, even um, despite the de-escalation uh, de -escalation period. Um, MSF has three hospitals that it, su it supports. No stuff because it's too tricky. We cannot uh, like take the responsibility if um, actual MSF stuff would be on the ground. Uh, no extremely, no or extremely limited uh, access to um, crossing the border. Um, so yeah, we have truckloads of hospital equipment and drugs that we could ship every now and then over the border. But there is a extremely limited um, movement possible of of, of like humans, for instance, for training, 
but also something simple like computer tablets. So the model, um, yeah, so I think, yeah, other most important is the triangulation of sources. You can imagine that if you get information of only a household survey in such a chaotic uh, war zone um, situation, it's going to be yield quite different results um, from yeah what like medical facilities or uh, NGOs will tell you. So um, this was like the backbone of the assessment or survey um, where we started early on of developing a platform um, negotiating well, basically um, talking to these parties and also looking to collaborations on uh, important health aspects. Um, in the region. So second of all, of course, for the quantitative part, the survey itself, uh, third party is, uh, well, in, inevitably you have to use it because yeah, we had no actual access to the area. Um, so yeah, so where do you start? Okay, so we, have, we had some hospitals on the ground. Um, we had our network and you start building like a like kind of an umbrella with like a third party where you start recruiting uh, people under that umbrella, trying to make sure you have small trainings, doing small other tasks, uh, preparing the massaging before you can do a, a large operation like a household survey. Um, then, yeah, well, technology is extremely important if you uh, um, try to, to, to implement such a remote uh, survey. So uh, we've been using the same software as Gus Sun was just presenting, but then for a survey. Um, so there's, there's numerous of advantages, of course, that um, uh, high quality data, you're able to do, use um, skip logic and constraints and um, notes and all these things, which speeds up the, uh, the, the work, which is obviously extremely important when shelling can happen any moment. Um, yeah, also, by the way, it allows you to check the data on a daily basis. I will come back to that later. Uh, make sure that you have feedback mechanisms every day. Supported hospitals. So yeah, well, obviously we had the uh, privilege to work with our three hospitals. And not only were they useful for like, recruiting our HR, um, basically enumerators, the field workers, for the survey, but um, they were also able to basically monitor our third party. Uh, not like very formally, uh, but it was an important way to uh, create somehow a uh, trust and bond. Border cross parties, yeah, so this is something, well, there was no actual access to Syria for, for instance, what is important for us was the computer tablets. Uh, so we were able to make a network from the very beginning on with some like border cross parties, some more sketchy than others, some authorities, some not, and try to make as many lines as possible to get your tablets into southern Syria. And the same is true for getting your enumerator once you have your third party installed into Jordan for an actual training on the nitty gritty of uh, such an operation. Mm. So this is, this is quite a, a, yeah, a complex process to follow. Then, uh, yeah, well, communication lines are obviously extremely important for uh, yeah, remote work. Um, so basically, we clear hierarchical structures. We had connections to the hospitals that were able to, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, look at the third party. We had like one supervisor for two teams, existing of two people um, that were constantly following them. Um, they were also in one, one WhatsApp, so on a daily basis, always were in contact with them. And the same is true for the survey manager that was, again, reporting on the supervisors. Um, in this way, we had in all layers, well, as much as we could, um, some um, a good idea of what's happening um, and feedback mechanisms. So here, you know, so the only pictures I could share. <laughs> it's, of course, a little bit uh, Compromise, but um, so these are our teams. Um, there was always one car following them in case of a security issue, but also like the supervisor was always close by. If there was an issue with a household, 
maybe it was a technical issue with the tablet or like um, on um, something not clear with the questionnaire. So then the results. Um, yes, first of all, the triangulation that really paid off. This is something uh, you not immediately think of with MSF. Okay, you do a one-off like, household survey and you go on with that information. I think, well, like getting mm -hmm, your uh, uh, getting information from NGOs, medical facilities is extremely important to either verify your findings and um, like negotiating access to well, as you said, the border uh, crossing. It's it's a very complex process, and uh, you should start very early on identifying your network, making sure you make office uh, visits and you keep it warm. Third party building, same. Make sure, like, it's like you make a very clear plan where you one by one recruit, recruit people. Make sure that you're able to provide them with something, make a trust bond. And well, this is all in a protocol that will be also published in uh, online. So if you're interested, uh, obviously, like communication, remote data. Well, this helped us massively uh, with technology. A lot in all contexts, this is possible, but. Um, uh, yeah, a little with solar panels and like these days, it should be possible to 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 um, get involved with um, tablets. So then, some other results, just to show you a bit like of the actual results from the survey. So on basis of the household survey, we found um, so we asked like mothers of children vaccination uh, booklets, and we found. But for instance, um, measles and polio was quite well covered, uh, whereas DTP and hepatitis B it wasn't well covered. Um, now we we're asking medical facilities and NGOs, so what's exactly going on? Well, apparently there was an influx of vaccination from Damascus into these areas, um, uh, but like uh, rounds of vaccination were erratic, and I access basically to these areas, it's it's um, very compromised. Then some other results, for instance, the NCDs. Well, you see one in three uh, adults reported to have one NCD. Well, it's your usual suspects, hypertension, diabetes, um, cardiovascular disease. Um, yeah, so what you hear from the medical facilities is that yeah, okay, there is some medicine, basic drugs, but it's like affordability for more secondary care, more complicated density care, it's, um, it's, not, it's not there. Specific drugs, and like insulin, like you have issues with excesses in the area, so cold chain is that's an extremely difficult story. Mm -hmm. Same is true for lab tests, often not available. Um, and all um, actors on the ground just say that, uh, well, like tracking the patients was lacking, which basically, yeah, well, compromises the quality of uh, continued care. Um, presence of war injury, 4%, much higher, of course, than in other areas. Uh, shrapnel wounds, uh, blasts, these kind of things. Fractures are often seen. Interestingly enough, most actors on the ground are like, agreeing that uh, during like the most like struggles and skirmishes, this was well covered by NGOs. Uh, so, and cost was an issue, but mostly it was covered by NGOs, um, the care for war trauma. Rehabilitation, different story. Like, a lot of people are um, having, of course, physical disabilities, think about limbs, uh, but also vision, and there was uh, barely any um, uh, availability of uh, this type of care. So, but can we conclude? Well, the model has proven to yield relevant information um, on healthcare gaps. Um, using triangulation is uh, very important to you know, well, make a complete story, verify your data from one place to another. Um, technology is extremely important. This is something uh, I, I can't like, emphasize more, but like, it speeds up the process, high data quality. Um, then investing in and continuous communication uh, communicating with a third party is essential. Well, I already explained that a bit. And then every context demands unit configuration. So obviously this is something you cannot directly extrapolate to another area. Mm -hmm. That's it. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs>